So we have a viewer from Fergus Falls that wants to, us to discuss a pretty controversial topic, and that's this viewer wants to know what the panel thinks about the red flag bill that passed or is going to pass in the House. Uh, I'm unclear whether it has passed or not. Uh, but this viewer says that it's going to and then is headed to the Senate. What does the panel think about that? Should we start with you, Representative Miller? Sure, yeah. Let me start off with the tough questions. Oh, sorry about that. No, no, I'll be, I'll be more than happy to. Uh, big shoulders. Um, I am not supporting the red flag bill. I understand the intent of it, okay? And uh, we certainly want to make sure that dangerous people, people that have severe mental illnesses, are not in a position uh, to hurt anyone. A couple things. First of all, we already have laws on the books that if they were enforced, I'm in public safety and we ask questions, is this law and is this law being enforced? And our top law enforcement officials are saying no, and they give reasons to that, but they say no. Um, so I think we need to do that. Also, just a really quick, brief version of the story from my son. He, he contacted me and said, you know, Dan, he's, he's in the National Guard. He owns weapons himself. And he said, you know, I, I kind of get this. I don't want to have a crazy person have a gun in, in their house. And I think we all agree on that. But I told my son, I said, do you remember when you had those, I hope he's not watching, but a couple issues previous years prior, and he saw some counseling and stuff. I said, the way the bill is written, I said, you are exposed to some of these very things that you're talking about. And then when you get into the weeds of it, who's going to confiscate? Who's going to do all these different things? It's extremely uh, problematic. Uh, the term, you're the attorney, so I don't want to say this wrong, but an but a ex parte hearing is part of the bill. If I'm being accused of something, I don't even necessarily have to be there for a judge to make a determination. So we certainly want to talk about this. I don't have a problem continuing the conversation with the bill that we're seeing right now. Um, I think it needs a, a lot more work. I won't support it. Senator Francis? Well, I don't um, serve in public safety anymore, but Senator Latz is our lead on this issue. I have been on a co-author mm -hmm. in this bill um, and, and certainly addressing the concerns that uh, Representative mm -hmm. Miller has, has brought forward. Uh, we have to do something. I mean, going back to schools um, for a second, I, I had um, the group of Moms Demands Actions comes to the Capitol. They had a rally. I met with some of my constituents there. And they made, uh, they had a story about um, one of the kids that was, um, the mom was talking about her kid, which um, they were having, um, a dis instead of a disaster um, drill, they have these drills of, of active shooter, and they have a name for it that seems the benign. Lockdown, lockdown. The drills. lockdown drills. Right. And kids are getting locked down, and teachers and, and whoever, administration is like literally going through the doors and acting like there's an active shooter. These kids are getting traumatized, and I can't even imagine. I grew up in Puerto Rico. Our drills were getting were getting under our, 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 our table because we could have a, we could have an earthquake, right? Um, but now these kids are, are growing up in this environment where you can be killed in school. That's that's the new normal. We have to change that. And and whether it's the red flag laws, we can't ignore that. That we're we're, we're creating um, we're, we're literally. Um, raising kids that are that are traumatized and 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 then after school they're going to instead of they're going to the, the soccer league they're going to counseling because of this and the, these are stories I'm hearing from parents in my district and I'm sure they're not in isolation so let's go to you Senator Rarick um, the viewers interested in the fact that this is going to the Senate and I think the Senate Majority Leader did say uh, something at least I if I recall the paper made some Minneapolis paper this morning made some comment that Bill might get a hearing. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what your views are on this. Um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Speaker, Leader Gazelka mm -hmm. uh, mentioned that if it does pass in the House, we will give it the hearing in the Senate, and, and I agree with that. You know, things should be heard. Um, but this bill as written, I can't get behind. Um, you know, we have a Second Amendment that mm -hmm. guarantees uh, the rights of gun owners and law-abiding gun owners especially, and this bill as written is really not taking that into account. Um, looking at saying you can come into some, you can be accused of something and have your gun confiscated. Uh, one, I've spoken to a number of my law enforcement officers. They don't want to be the one going to the door of somebody who mm -hmm. hasn't even been able to be in court to defend themselves to take those guns away. That That's not something they want to do. And, you know, this is, we shouldn't be doing something that is, potentially going to be very bad just to say we did something. And I look at it that this is more of a societal issue and we're taking the gun as the, the bad guy in this situation. A gun is a tool just like a, a hammer or a screwdriver can be on a construction site. 
And it's up, it's the person who has it in their hands that's going to determine if it's used for something good or if it's used for something bad. And I get it, we have some people out there that want to do bad things with it, but if we can identify somebody that is a potential threat and there is means to show, we have a current law that says that person can be taken into custody for up to 72 hours, and that is going to protect people. Taking one weapon or tool out of their hand doesn't protect anyone. Um, they can use a car. They could use uh, any other tool uh, to do that act. And so I think picking the gun as the one bad actor in the whole thing isn't looking at the problem the way we should be. You know, the mental health issue and putting funds into that is one of these key things. And I think putting money into schools to do these, uh, the safe schools, allowing them to do what they need for the protections, um, that's what will definitely be a help. Um, I think just picking on one thing isn't isn't the answer. Representative Purcell, your thoughts? I, I'm generally supportive of that red flag uh, bill. I, I, uh, different interpretations of what, as, as one might expect of what the actual meaning is of the words that are in the bill. And, uh, but uh, the interesting part to me, and I've had a number of people come and talk to me about it, uh, and uh, I probably own more firearms than most folks in the state of Minnesota. Uh, and I pick which one I'm going to go shoot deer with every year, you know. Uh, but but uh, I, it's been interesting, and, and I think in a good way. Uh, and I've had some NRA folks in my office. And uh, just what Senator Rary just said, it's not the weapon. Yeah. And I, I agree, it's not the weapon, it's the person. So let's talk about how we're going to make this better for the, for the people, the persons. And, and, and it's not necessarily school shootings, and that seems to be a driving force, obviously. But what I understand is that about what the bill really will do is help prevent suicide. Mm -hmm. that, that's, um, uh, if, you, if there's not access to a firearm, there's a lot of ways to kill yourself, but, but, but a lot of them are really hard, and a firearm just, you know, boom, it's done, and, and often taken other people with. So uh, I, we're having the discussion. Where it'll end up, I don't know, but I absolutely believe we have to continue the discussion and arrive at a point where we can address the issues, the underlying issues with the with the, the folks in our state that uh, that would do harm to themselves or others. And uh, I tell the story, uh, the folks come in, if I may real quick. No, please go right ahead. My basic military training, before we went to, before we went to live fire on the firing range, uh, there were two young men that were taken, this is during Vietnam, there were two young men that were taken out of, the, uh, uh, of our platoon and removed. And, uh, two drill sergeants and they and I you know didn't know what happened but these guys were gone and it come to find out that those drill sergeants did not trust those young men with a live fire weapon on the firing range that's just just where the way they were we found this out later so there is I mean it's not necessarily a science but there's certainly something to this and who should have firearms and who shouldn't have mm -hmm. firearms and if somebody has acted out in society and uh, and violently, well, I think they ought to be thinking about whether that person should have a firearm. 